الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah, we praise him We seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped. None has the right to our ultimate love and devotion except Allah alone, without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except as Muslims. O oh mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person. And from him he created his wife. And from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kinship. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O oh you who believe, keep your duty to Allah. Fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best of speech is that of Allah. And the best of guidance, the best way of life is that Prophet Muhammad came with. And every in, the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters. And every newly invented matter in the, in the religion is an innovation and every innovation is misguidance and every misguidance will lead to the hellfire. There was a Muslim, a young, a, young, a young man, a young Muslim man who still lives today. His name is Hassan. In his 20s, he went through very hard times. He had some symptoms that interrupted his life, disrupted his whole profession. Every aspect of his life was in turmoil because of that trial. He went to doctors, physicians, to his GP, tried to find out, tried to investigate what was going on in his life. He had so many pains. He couldn't sleep well. There were problems even with his wife, with his children, with everybody. So he was truly in trouble. And one day he decided to go and see one of the scholars who still live today as well. He went to him and he realized that he was the victim of black magic. Some black magic, some sihr was done for him. And so he is possessed by jinn that has turned his life in, into hell. And that scholar was generous enough to give him of his time. And he made ruqya for him, exorcism. Until with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was cured. Now apparently this Hassan was going through a trial and he himself admits that through that trial, he questioned 
the purpose for him going through that hardship. He questioned the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the extent that there was a question resonating in his head. Oh Allah, why did you do this to me? Oh Allah, why did you choose me to go through this trial? My brothers are all right. My family is all right. Everybody in my neighborhood is okay. Why me? How many times we go through trials? You go through hardships. It could be financial, it could be personal. Whatever type of problem, we go through problems, but we question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, why did, you do, why did you do it to me? You might actually verbalize that and say it. But many people keep it inside. Why do we question the wisdoms of Allah? Why do we question the decree of Allah and what happens with us? Let's go back to Hassan and find out. After being cured of this, Hassan had a very humble job before going through that trouble. He was a caretaker. And that job didn't pay off like big time. He didn't get big good wages. But it was enough to survive and keep his family well. But after that, he realized, he, after, after being cured from that, he started to question himself. He questioned the very meaning of his existence in this world. And he realized that after going through this trial, he has learned so much about black magic and about the trials and the hardship the person goes through when, when, when he is the victim of black magic and possession of jinn, that he was now qualified to help other people in similar situations. And guess what? For the last 20 years of his life, Allah has cured thousands of people through Hassan without taking a penny for what he does. And until today, people come to him from, from the States, from Canada, from the UK, from Australia. They fly to him because of his expertise in that. He also knows the medical conditions that could be confused with black magic. And I've witnessed my, with my own eyes some people come to him claiming they have black magic. And after listening to their description or the, to what they have to say about the symptoms, he tells them you have nothing. Go to the doctor and ask him to get you, uh, you know, such and such inspection. And when they go to the doctor, they find out it's a totally medical condition, a medical illness. What was that process that Hassan went through? Millions of people have gone through the same thing, the same process. It's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times, Allah sends opportunities our way, and when we see them, we consider them, we consider them to be trouble. We consider them to be problems. We consider them to be challenges that will wreck our life, that will destroy our life. But in reality, these are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consider the life of the Prophet sallallahu himself. In Mecca, 13 years, he's calling the people to Islam, saying to them, I am showing you the way that le the way that can take you from your path to the hellfire. And I'm guiding you to the way leading to eternal happiness, to the pleasure of Allah, to paradise. That's what's, what's every human being has in his own heart as an intrinsic talent to search eternal happiness, to search the pleasure of Allah, to search the ultimate state of resourcefulness has been put in the heart, in the heart of every human being. Yet what was the response? He was challenged. He was persecuted. His companions were tortured, were killed in front of his eyes, and he couldn't do anything. What was the outcome? The best nation ever brought forth to mankind. History was written with actions of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ who went through these very trials. Ask yourself the question, who are the best Muslims in the history, in the history of Islam? Who are they? The companions of the Prophet ﷺ. The Messenger ﷺ makes that clear when he says, إِنَّ أُمَّتَكُمْ هَذِهِ جُعِلَتْ عَافِيَتُهَا فِي أَوَّلِهَا This nation of yours, the best state of it, the best of it, has been in the early stages of it. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي The best of humanity, the best of people ever, are my generation. Why? Who are the best among the companions? That's another question. Who are the best of the companions? 
the ones who when they had contact with the world, with the outside world, they transformed the face of the earth. They were the leaders of Islam for about 60 years after the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The amount of transformation they brought to humanity has no parallel whatsoever. Where did it come from? It came from the persecution they went through in the early stages. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to transform you, Allah wants to make you a better Muslim, you cannot ascend to a higher level of faith, of iman, of skill, of personal strength. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to you? If you settle for complacency and you feel relaxed, you don't want to get out of your comfort zone. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to you? He sends trials your way. Why? To transform you. So that you become a better person. And this is one of the explanations that the scholars gave for the very famous verse that we quote when we are in trouble. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, with every hardship, there is ease. That's the ease. The ease is within the hardship itself. But it manifests itself best when the hardship is over and you find yourself to be a totally different person on a higher level of faith, a higher level of conduct, a higher level of achievement in every aspect of your life. But when we are in the trial, what happens? Our intellect, our understanding contracts. We start to question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But bear in mind, whenever a trouble comes your way, whenever a trouble comes your way, consider that to be a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have been unable to grow up to a higher level and Allah has given you the opportunity now. The Prophet sallallahu says, and this is the wisdom behind this hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa says, يُبْتَلَ الرَّجُلُ عَلَى حَسْبِ دِينِهِ A person will be tried with hardship, with challenges, trials, according to the level of his iman, according to the level of his faith and his deen. أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ The people who receive the most or the hardest trials are the prophets. Then the ones nearby in iman. Then the, one near, the ones nearby and so on and so forth. A person will be tried according to the level of their faith. Why? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the prophets most and the righteous ones most, according to the level of your iman, of your taqwa, Allah loves you. So why does Allah send more trouble when He loves more? Because trial is good. Ultimately, there is so much wisdom and benefit in trials. But the thing is that most of us are short-sighted not to notice that. So this is why you will be tried in accordance to your iman. So that it's a, it's, a, it's a balance between two extremes. Because if the hardship is so tough for you, you might just denounce Islam and keep away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it's too easy, it will not push you to a higher level. It's a balance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wisdom even with the, decree, with the degree to which He tests you. The trial has been tailored for you according to your faith. So look at it favorably. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the wisdom behind that. And this is, and by the way, if you don't maintain this mentality or this outlook on trial, what will happen? The trial will turn out to be punishment for you. And you will miss all the advantages of that. Who says that? The Prophet ﷺ. He makes it clear when he says in the hadith, which he actually narrates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A hadith Qudusi, divine hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and listen to this beautiful statement. He says, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي فَلْيَظُنَّ عَبْدِي بِي مَا شَاءَ Wallahi, by this hadith, you can live your life without trouble, with, with, with internal peace that can never be disrupted. I am to my servant as he thinks about me. What do you think about Allah? I am to my servant as he thinks about me. So when the trial comes your way, what, what are the thoughts that you have to have about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you maintain good thoughts that are in accordance with the names and attributes of Allah. And this is why if you want to attain this high level, you need to learn the names and attributes of Allah. That He is the most wise. He is the omnipotent. His knowledge encompasses everything. There's no, 
There's no value learning these without applying them in our lives. So when you know that Allah is the most wise, the trial comes your way, you know that everything happens by the permission of Allah. It happens by the permission of Allah, and Allah is wise, it must be good for me. I'll trust Allah, and I'll march forward, and I see what opportunity Allah has put, it, Allah has put in my way through this trial. I'll see through it, and I'll be able to, get to, to savor the rewards of that. The Prophet ﷺ one day came to this companion, and the, the companion had fever, he was dehydrated. And he was in severe pain. The Prophet ﷺ says to him, it's a, it's a mercy from Allah. It's a trial. So be patient. The Prophet ﷺ is trying to teach him the same wisdom. The man says, no, it's hell for me. It's punishment. The Messenger ﷺ then said, then it is. The way you see it, this is how you will react to it, and this is what you will get at the end. So let's maintain that. Just like this person, Hassan. Another person went through a hardship when it came to marriage. He had so much trouble with his wife. And he, wa he loved her so much. And he questioned why at the end they had to be separated. They couldn't live with, uh, with each other for the rest of their lives. He was frustrated. He fell in depression. And he didn't realize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for him. But after some time, he grew to realize that life is much more than that. There's much ben there's, there's so much there is so much opportunity in this life than he thought before. Years later he says, Wallahi, no matter what wealth I have and can I can pay any person on earth to teach me the lessons that I've learned from that experience, no money would be enough to pay a person to teach me the same lessons I learned through this trial. And he grew up to be the best counselor and family affairs I've, I've ever come across in this world today. Daily, he deals with more than 10 cases and most of the time he gets it right and he gets people together. So when Allah tests you, when Allah tests you, Allah wants you to grow higher. The Prophet ﷺ makes it clear in a very beautiful hadith. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes has a high level of reward in Jannah for a person. Allah has dedicated or has allocated a high rank for a person in Jannah. And the person is so complacent that he doesn't do actions, he doesn't do righteousness, he doesn't contribute to qualify to that rank. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? So Allah tries him in order to scrape off his sins. So he grows to qualify for that rank. So maintain that notion as you go through trials. And this is what we have to do. The, when the Muslims <coughs> went through hardship after the battle, or during and after the battle of Uhud, some scholars of Islam consider this to be, or not to be, a defeat. Whatever terms you like to put it in. But it was not a military victory. The battle of Uhud was not. It was some kind of a setback. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to the believers? The, the hypocrites said, if you really were, if you were upon the truth, so why do you have to go through these trials? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers about the right mindset to deal with such issues, with such calamities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Never be humiliated and never fall in sadness and apprehension. Never. Don't surrender to that. You will be the uppermost as long as you hold on to faith. As long as you hold on to Iman. What does that mean? Maintain the right aqeedah about Allah, the right, the right faith about Allah, the right belief about Allah, that He's the most wise, He's the omnipotent, He knows what He's doing, and that He's the Rabb, the Lord of the world, and He runs the affairs of the world in the best fashion. So don't question His wisdom. Don't question His, his decree. Just try to find out the right course of action that you can follow to reap the fruits of this trial. If you are hit by a setback, a similar setback has hit the people that have defeated you or have overcome you this time. These are the days of this dunya that we alternate. One day we give to you, or we, one, one day we give to your enemy. 
وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين and Allah makes you go through these trials so he makes clear who the true believers are because they will stand out they will maintain the right thoughts about Allah they will be strong in the face of calamity an unwavering faith you see them with this powerful presence with this powerful personality all the odds are against them but they are confident they are courageous they are strong they're never weak you don't, you don't see them weak everything is against them everything seems to be against them but they are confident they march forward with all stability sustainability and persistence and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says at the end of the verse and Allah does not love of Valimeen the ones who do un do injustice and that's a clear indication that don't ever question the justice of Allah don't ever do that then Allah clarifies to them what are the the wisdoms that he made made them go through these trials for Allah doesn't love the ones who do injustice uh, anyway, the verses go as that to, to the effect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make clear the true believers who they are. So don't ever question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah wants to take martyrs from among the believers. So every time there's, a, there's hardship, every time the ummah goes through hard times like today, many people look at the state of the ummah when they watch the news, they say, why did we have to live at this time? Why didn't we live in the time of the Prophet ﷺ? I would have been a hero. Now the times of the Prophet ﷺ were even harder than these. But we're just, that's wishful thinking, we're daydreaming. The trials we go through have been tailored for us, but we need to have the right understanding, the right impression about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how we can go through that. And every time you go through hardship, do you know what happens? Because imagine we lived at the time of the companions. Imagine we lived at the time of a Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Abu Hanifa, these great scholars. If we lived at their time, we would, we would be dwarfed by their intelligence, by their contributions, by their achievements. We would be nothing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at these times made it even easier. With a small contribution you do for Islam, you stand out today. You're getting... Multiple reward, and this is why the Prophet ﷺ says that when the people come at later generations, at the later stages of this ummah, the Prophet ﷺ says, for each one of them who holds on to the truth, there will be the reward of 50 of you, of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Each person at the times, at the later stages, at the later generations of this ummah, will get 50 times the reward of a single companion. Why? Because even if you do very little, you're standing out. The level of achievement has become low. So if, just if you put your hand up, you'll be able to hold on to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it easy for us at these times to make a contribution, to make a difference only by maintaining the right belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will say this and I will say this. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So brothers and sisters, in order, in order for us to survive at this time, we have to go to the mine of wisdom, the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. The life of the Prophet, the Sira of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, is full, is replete with so much, so many lessons, so much wisdom. Personal greatness is there. All the traces of personal greatness, you can find them in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. How to handle any situation. How to handle any difficulty. The Messenger ﷺ kept his, his hopes high, even at the most difficult times. But in order to grow, we have to go through, through these trials. That's, that's human nature. That's human nature. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a wake-up call for us when He sends trials our way. So if we maintain that, and if we maintain the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maintain that trust in Allah, all this hardship that's happening today will turn into a blessing in disguise. And that's the reality of it. 
It's just a matter of you realizing it or failing to do that. Now I'll share with you some of the benefits, the clear benefits of going through trials that we can really benefit from inshallah and try every time you go through a hardship in your personal life, in your professional life, uh, financially, whatever you go through, even if it's a medical condition, just try to figure out what this would add to you. Just like this person Hassan. Allah has saved through him thousands of people. And until today, and by the way, he now he's better than the person who treated him in the first place. He's the expert number one. And he has so much insight in that. And most of the people have been, who, who've gone through trials, I mean, they, minta, they maintain a posit, positive attitude, the correct belief about Allah. They had husn al about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have grown amazingly. Imam Shafi'i understood that very well because one day he was asked by a person, which is better for a person? To be empowered, to be given strength, dominance and maturity or to go through trials? He was surprised by the question. He said, no one will be empowered without going through trials. Imam Ahmad was one of the scholars of the time. Like any, any other scholar. One of the scholars of the time. Why did he stand out? When he went through the trial of Khalq al-Quran, the claim that the Quran was created, he stood out. He said, no. They said, you're under torture. You have the excuse to say, to agree. Just, you just save yourself. He said, no. And one day they brought him out. And they said, you just save yourself. They brought scholars, his friends. They told him, Allah has excused you. Why do you put yourself under so much pressure? You're about to die. You're about to be killed. They brought a paper for him and a pen to write and make the declaration that the Quran was created, which is a statement of disbelief. And they gathered the people, thousands of people in one plane. And when he looked and he saw all these people, he reclined. And he said a very beautiful statement. He said, wala udillu ha ula. I die, I, I rather die than send these people astray. It was hardship. And he stood out until today. When we talk about Ahlul Sunnah, the people, the true followers of the Prophet ﷺ, who hold on to the Sunnah of the Messenger, ﷺ, we say, Who's the Imam? That's his name, that's his title. Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Until today, more than a thousand, a thousand years have passed and he is the Imam without any rival. It's through hardship. If this hardship didn't come his way, I don't think he would have really occupied this high position in the heritage of this Ummah and in the hearts of the, of the Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through trials, He raises your rank in faith and Iman and He forgives your sins. So this is one of the wisdoms and this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that according to the, to the level of your Iman, you will be tried. You will be tried. Allah will remove your sins by that. The Messenger ﷺ also says in the end of, at the end of this hadith, وَلَا يَزَالُ الْبَلَاءُ فِي الْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَذَرَهُ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مَا عَلَيْهِ قَطِيئًا That trial will keep hitting the person, hitting the Muslim, until he walks on earth free of sin. You've done so much sin, Allah wants to purify you. Allah doesn't want you to be to be held, to be kept, to be held down and pulled down by that sin. So Allah sends trial, trials your way so that your sins are forgiven and you rise up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through trials makes the true believers stand out. Because in the times of, tri of trial, the true believers stand out. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verses we quoted, the verses that come after them, وَلِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا And Allah wants the hypocrites to become apparent. So the believers will stand out and the hypocrites, the ones with weak faith, will be noticed as well. So we know who the true believers are. And Allah made the trials the way to this, to, the, to, the, to paradise. Because the nature of this world is that it's a time of trial. There is no absolute goodness, there's no absolute evil. You can never attain happiness. In this world, ultimate happiness, constant happiness, absolute happiness, because that, that's not the world for happiness. And there's no ultimate misery in this world. It's a mixture of both. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept purity for the hereafter. 
So there will be ultimate happiness in paradise and ultimate misery and abyss in the hellfire. So the way to happiness, the eternal happiness, is through, is through, uh, through enduring the hardships and the difficulties of this world. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُوا الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Do you think you will be let to enter paradise when the trials that came to the people before you have not come to you yet? In Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah makes it clear. He says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do you think people will be left alone to say, we have believed when they have not been tested yet? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We have tested the people who came before them. And Allah shall make clear the true believers and shall make clear those who are liars, the deceivers. Allah shall make them clear as well. So this is what trials do to us. And with trials, we grow even in personal power, even in determination. Personal strength, character is sharpened, is polished through hardship. This is why you find our elderly are the most experienced. Especially if they keep an open mind and the right thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will have a lot of wisdom. They have a lot of courage and strength. They have a deeper insight into things. They can see through things. They're not stuck with the apparent features of, of matters and problems. They can see through trials. They can see the wisdoms behind trials. And they can tell the reality of people as well. Because this, they have this ability. They grow with trials. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send, sends the trials because it's, the, it's human nature to feel proud of oneself. To think that we are doing well. Some people think they are the most righteous person on earth and they have so many sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to them trials that will make their mistakes clear. They start to see their weakness, so they can treat it. You see how weak you are, so you realize there's a need that I have to treat this weakness, so I become better. So you, you try to treat yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the trials as well, in order to make you long for paradise. Because sometimes when things are easy and rosy, we feel complacent. We tend to enjoy ourselves. Now life is going well for me. I'm getting very good, you know, very good wages, I'm in a very good financial situation of financial state, I'm happy, everything is, is just as I want it to be. If you fall into this, you'll stop, you'll stop yearning for paradise. And you will, this is where the downhill starts in your life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a trial your way. So it reminds you. I heard that person mentioning a story happening to him. He was driving on the highway and it was winter time. So the heater was on in the car and he decided he wanted to get some fresh air. So he opened the window a little bit, just slightly. And there was a piece of paper, a dirty piece of paper. And he said, at that time I, fe I felt so proud about myself. I thought I was doing well even in matters of the deen. And I thought I was the most righteous person on earth. So I opened and I, th I thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I had the, he said, I had the impression that Allah should bring on my way what is good? Because I'm, I'm fulfilling my duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, just he opened the window and a, piece, a dirty piece of paper slammed on his forehead. He closed the window and it caused him to think. It was, it sti the, you know, there was a stink coming out of that. It smelled really bad. It was on his, his, on his forehead. And it caused him to, rem to, rem to really realize what he was in. He realized that this is not the life. I should be aspiring, is the hereafter. Allah, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that to me to wake me up. So this life is built on hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We have created man to toil, to, to go through hardship, to, to, to work hard in this life. That's the reality of this life. So don't expect it. Don't expect it to be easy for you. And in, in, in marketing, they have this rule, they say, the level of satisfaction the, the customers have is the difference between expectations and the service that they get. So the wider the gap is, the less the satisfaction is. 
And this works perfectly when we expect this world to be good for us. We expect this life to be rosy and wonderful. We have high expectations about it. But in reality, it's not. It's not designed to be like that. It's designed to guide you to Allah. It's, it's designed to be a means for you to attain paradise. This is the reality of this life. So the reality of this life will be less than your expectations. So you will never reach happiness. You will never reach satisfaction. But if you maintain the reality of this life, that it's a time for trial, it's a test for you, it's a short period of time to prepare you to make it to paradise. It's a means. It's full of opportunities for you to make it to paradise. This is the reality of this life. This is why the scholars say it's Mazra'atul Akhirah, as Ali ibn Abi Talib said. It is the fertile soil. So you can, you can grow plants in it to achieve paradise. That's the reality of this life. So if you maintain its reality, the level of your expectations will be exactly the reality of this life. So you will be in control of, of this life. There are so many wisdoms that we can share. The Quran is full with that. With that. The, the life of the Prophet is full with that. So let's try to ponder in it and benefit on it, inshallah. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring honor and dignity to this ummah and to open our minds and our hearts to live by the Quran and the Sunnah and to maintain the right belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the trials that we go through. Allahumma ya muqallib al qulubi thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma izz al islam wal muslimin. Allahumma ij'al hadhi al ummah qadat al umam. Allahumma ruddana ila deenik ruddan jameela. Allahumma abrim li hadhi al ummah ibram rushd. يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويذل فيه أهل معصيتك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين I'll just remind you before we pray that inshallah the brothers in the masjid may Allah reward them uh, and you can see mashallah the great work they're doing uh, that they will be fundraising inshallah for the masjid so be generous with that and don't forget this will definitely help us grow as well Allah calls it tazkiyah it purifies our heart and it purifies our Iman, inshallah. May Allah reward you for that. As-salamu